everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am in my office and I had all the equipment set up and I am processing a video and exporting a video and sending a video to someone and I thought, while it's all set up, while I'm not sweaty Betty because the aircon is still broken, why don't I do a quick Q&A and then I made the mistake of asking on Instagram and we're currently at 300 comments. Oh no, 264, I exaggerated. So, I think I'll start with, because I've, I've just put up a skincare Q&A with Teresa Tami, so I think I'm going to start with the personal Q&A, and then if there's time afterwards, I'll split it and do a quick skincare Q&A. So I'm going to be answering personal questions, and I'll be looking down because my phone is here. So, and I'm not going to do it all fancy like all my mates do, and like put the question across the screen. Ain't no one got time for that, you'll just have to listen to me. <laughs> so rude! So I'm going back to the beginning, back to the beginning. Okay, your hair routine and the best products for dry hair. Okay, that's not really skin, but I will tell you that I've had a blow dry and I always have a blow dry. I try and have a blow dry before I film because it just makes me feel a bit better. I'll do hair extensively somewhere else. Can you talk about how to work hard in retail? I'm trying to be promoted through the system, but don't feel like I'm getting anywhere. And that is from Sophie Mason. Yes, Sophie, I can. Retail is hard. The only job I've had that was harder than retail was waitressing. Um, I would, I would say if you're not, if you don't feel like you're getting on where you are, then consider moving. I would, my advice is to work for a smaller brand. That always worked for me. If you want to move up quickly, you need to work for a smaller brand because there's less people above you and less people sort of in the competition. So I don't know where you work, you haven't given me any more details, but if you're trying to move up and you can't move up quick enough, look, purposely seek out smaller brands, especially brands that aren't based in the UK. I mean, I kind of built my entire career where I ended up working for American brands by accident and it served me in good stead because they're not in the country, they need someone with the eyes and ears here. Now that's obviously a bit further down the road from you. It sounds like you're still sort of working your way up through the ranks. But yes, I would work really hard, but don't work too hard. And I, all I mean by that is work, do the job to the best of your ability, but I'm not a big believer in getting in first and leaving early. All that tells me is maybe you're not that great at getting your work done in the time you're sort of given. Go in, do your job, work really hard, go home and have a life. Um, if you didn't end up in the beauty world, what would you be doing now? And that is from Bosima. <laughs> if I didn't end up in the beauty world, what would I be doing now? Well, in my head, I'd like to be a famous country singer and living in Nashville. Um, but I would probably, I always, I thought I wanted to be a midwife, then I realised I'm not good in hospitals. I am actually, I'm brilliant in emergencies. If there is a problem or there is something that's gone wrong, I am who you want on your team, trust me. But I'm not good in hospitals. Blood is fine, like if the kids have injured themselves and stuff, that's fine. But if they're having an operation, Mr. Hirons has to take over in the recovery room because I can't deal. I'm just like, Bleh. no. So I used to want to be a midwife. Now I know I couldn't handle it at my age. I used to want to be a teacher when I was younger. Um, and then I had kids and thought, sod that, and I'm joking, I love you. I was a nanny when I was younger. I'd probably end up being a PA. You know, I'd like to think I would run my own business, but then what would I run my own business in? I'd probably be the head of a PA school because I'm quite, quite good at being bossy and, no really, at being organized and keeping people on schedule. There we go. Um, are you going to be doing consultations again in the future? Maybe, at the moment I don't have time. I am working on so many things and I refuse to let you spend good money trying to come and see me. Then you come and see me and it hasn't happened but I, because I refuse to let it happen and then you don't have my full attention. I'm not gonna let that happen. What advice would you give yourself at 25? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of anything. Don't be afraid of people's opinions of you. Don't worry about people's opinions of you. Um, do what you want to do. Put your head down and work hard. It's kind of what I did. Sorry, I'm just skipping through the skinny questions. Skinny? Skin questions. What made you want to go into the beauty industry, particularly skincare? Um, it happened purely by chance. A girlfriend of mine, I had always used skincare and I'd always shopped in the central London area. Everybody who's old school will know that my mum is in the industry, my grandmother was in the industry. Did I turn the mic on? Please hold. <laughs> yes, 
I did. I was just going to check before I did a half an hour video. Um, and so it had always been in the peripheral, but I never sort of, I never ever thought about working in the industry until I had my second child and I phoned my girlfriend Lorraine, who at the time was working for Aveda, and said, I need a weekend job. If you hear of anything going in Harvey Nichols, let me know. And she said, babe, I've said this story before with the Sally Hughes video, uh, babe, there's a job going here. And I got the job and then I got jumped from weekend girl to manager. And then from there I went like that. So that's how I ended up. But skincare happened, that was just my passion. Um, I'm a trained makeup artist, not that you'd know it, I mean the state of it. But I retrained and did more in-depth facial skincare training because that was what I was more interested in. Um, how do you stay so real in an industry that seems to focus on what's real? I don't know if that means to not focus on what's real. Um, I think I'm older. I'm older, I'm not trying to impress anyone. I mean this in the nicest possible way and I hope you take something from it. I don't care about your opinion of me. And I please take that the way I mean it. Obviously, I am thrilled that my readers and viewers seem to respect me, but I'm not gonna be held back by worrying that you might not like me. Does that make sense? I mean it, I promise you I mean it in the best way and it's one of the few bits of life advice I give don't care about what anyone thinks about you except for your deathbed people. That's what I call my deathbed people. Husband, kids, mum, dad, sibling. Maybe my best mates. But it's less than 10 people, literally. Everybody else, you don't like me, it's not my problem. I think I'm a good person. But equally, it doesn't mean I would go out of my way to be a dick to you. Do you see what I mean? Okay. It's all coming from a good place. Oh, hopefully she answers this one. Oh, it was a skincare one. Sorry, I'm scrolling. Uh, <laughs> how can I bribe you to swing by Texas during one of your US visits? I've been to Texas. Please forgive the state's political views. There are some of us left-wingers who keep trying to make a difference. I'm not gonna get into the politics, but I love the South and I love America. Advice to someone who wants to start a skincare blog. What should I read? Here in Brazil, we don't have good ones, only makeup blog bloggers. Um, I can't comment on Brazil. The only one I know is uh, Vic, who I can link below. Um, advice for someone who wants to start a skincare blog. Just start. That's all I did. I went on to blogspot.co.uk, I think it was. I bought a domain name. That came down the road, though. My first one was .blogspot.co.uk and just write. And that's it. That's all you need. A computer and a name. Um, that looks like it's written in a foreign language. Sorry, can't help you there. Um, 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 also wanted to ask, were you really in a band as a backup singer? Yes. Would love to hear the story of that on a vlog. Um, it was a friend of mine um, called Billy Franks, who sadly passed away last year, and my husband was in his band at the time, and that is how we met. We had kind of seen each other on the peripheral before, and then we met properly when he was playing guitar and I was singing, but I wasn't doing like a full set. I was doing like one song um, with a girlfriend and I thought, <laughs> yes, please, he's hot, definitely would. And it's now 30 years later, almost, no joke. How did you get so funny? Your wit is hilarious. <laughs> Thanks, I don't know, but I appreciate it. Okay, this is, this, I know what happened. There's a ton of skincare and then I re-edited the Instagram and said, would you mind just not doing just all skincare? And then I got more. Your five ride or die skincare items. Balm cleanser, acid toner, retinol, vitamin C, SPF. Oh, I've never done that before. Oh, any advice or resources for someone trying to start a career in the beauty industry? I'm spinning my chair. I can't do this when I'm doing my normal videos, but this feels more funner. Um, in the beauty industry, yes, depends what you want to do. If you want to be in the front of shop, i.e. on the sales floor, just go for a job on any of the counters, places like Space NK, um, you know, places where you're going to be busy and you're going to be taught knowledge. The reason I managed to sort of gain so much product knowledge is that I was at Space NK 20 years ago in the early days when we would have trainings every single week on all the brands. Um, so I would inquire, don't take no for an answer, pound the streets, make friends with the people, the girls and the boys on the counters, ask around, is anything coming up? Do you know if anything's coming up? It's all work, it's all hustle, but it's so worth it. It's a great industry to work in. 
if you could only live with one skincare product, now I'm, I'm just gonna do one, what would it be and why? Oh, I can't do that, acid toners. What lippy are you wearing in this gorgeous photo? It is a MAC lip liner called something like More to Love, More Than Love, More to Love, with the glossier lip gloss on top. Um, what do you think of male rompers? Jenny and Dixie, a cheeky thing. Honestly, do you want to add another cat? No. Monty and Penny are plenty, they do lots of pooing, and that's enough for any family, thank you. How do you balance raising children with building a career? It seems impossible at times. That's Twiglet Pudding, excellent Instagram name. Um, it is exhausting. It's much easier now the kids are older, but when they were younger, there were times where my husband would be at work, I'd be at work. I had a childminder to pick up the two boys. So we have four children, two in their 20s, 115 and 112. And I would get a call saying, your son needs to be picked up and I'd be on the shop floor. It is hard work. Um, I honestly, I think back of it and I think a lot of it, I've blocked it out. It's really hard work. You have to have a really strong support system. So my husband and I were always, you know, sort of work closely together. Um, but yeah, it's not easy. I'm not gonna lie. It's just not easy. It's hard, hard work. Did you always want four children? No, I always wanted two children before I was 25 and I did that. And then about six or seven years later, I had a craving for a baby girl, literally. I mean, it was just bizarre. Literally craved a baby girl. And my girlfriend, Nikki, had done what she called the girl boy diet and the girl boy sex. And I thought it was all a big mother's, uh, what's it called? Old, old wife's tale. And I thought, well, it can't hurt. So I said to my husband, I wanna have another baby. And he was like, what? <laughs> we did that. And I was like, no, I really need another baby. You don't understand, I need another baby. Um, and just for the sake of it, because I thought, well, it can't hurt. And I always knew I would have boys, but I really felt like, like I was craving a daughter, very odd. And I changed my diet completely to the girl diet. And I know this all sounds mumbo jumbo. If I was watching it, I'd be going, you idiot. I'd change um, the way we went about it, which would be the um, reproductive side to the girl side. And when I was about eight weeks pregnant, I threw up and I knew I was having a girl because I wasn't sick once with the boys. And we went for a scan and they were like, I just knew. With Ava, I just knew everything. I knew that she was healthy. I knew it was a girl. Um, and we went for the scan and they were measuring and they were saying, oh, it looks healthy. And I was like, blah, 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 I know she's healthy. Tell me there's no penis. <laughs> and she went, pardon? My husband was like, just tell her she's driving us nuts. And she said, um, I, you want to know? And I was like, I know it's a girl, but I need you to convince me to, to confirm it so I can decorate. And then she said, I can confirm there is no penis. And I was like, yes. And then Ava was born. And about a year later, I said to my husband, well, she can't be on her own. The boys are bigger, she can't be on her own, we have to have another baby. And he was a bit like, um, okay, we've got three, calm down, we live in central London, money, etc., etc." But that's not to say that if it was up to us, if we had loads of money when we were younger, we might have six or seven kids because we love our kids. Um, and it was just, the whole process was a, a joy. I mean, I've had numerous miscarriages, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it was all blase and easy. Um, but anyway, after we had Ava, I said, I, I need another baby. She can't be on her own. And again, it was like a craving. And I said to my husband, I'm gonna get pregnant, I'm gonna have a boy and we're gonna call him Max. And he was like, you're taking the planning a bit too far. And then I got pregnant, it was a boy, and we called him Max. Yes. How the hell did you manage four kids, career and childcare? I know, I totally get it. It never ends, it's really busy. Our household is busy. Um, even, you know, even that the older ones are bigger and help out, it's really busy, that's all I can tell you. It's busy, expect hard work, expect lots of tears, but expect tons of joy along the way. Is it true that you don't like the Clarisonic and if so, why? I don't like the Clarisonic, it's all on the blog, I'll put a link below, because people use it as if they're dusting grit off their face, that's why. Um, what do you do to clear your mind when things get a bit too much and you need to refocus on yourself? I go in the kitchen, I shut the door and I watch SVU while I make a cup of tea and plan food. No joke. Um, or I go and lock myself in the bedroom and do the same thing. I would love to know about your career in beauty business. I started following those. Okay, I'm gonna put a link below to the Sally Hughes video, the very first one, because I talk about my entire backstory there and it saves me going over it again and I will put that there. Random, best affordable area to live in or near London. There isn't one. It's not affordable at all. <laughs> Uh, what did your husband do? Mr. Hirons does not like me to discuss his business, so I will honour that. 
Uh, he keeps me in check. That's what Mr. High runs does. Mm -hmm. He runs our operation like a ship. Uh, top five facials in London, preferably various budgets. Please could you recommend top five facials in London? Theresa Tommy, obviously. Um, Theresa Tommy. Now I haven't had some of the big, the big facialists that are sort of up and coming and really popular. I haven't, I haven't had those, so I can't say. Um, I would possibly say Declior and Clarins. I love a French facial. Biologique Recherche at EF Medispa. I would go and see them. Um, and I'll link these below because I have a feeling I'm just rabbiting now because it's getting on. Um, Biologique Recherche, Clarins, Declior. Preferably not a department store one because that tends to be quite formulaic. And actually, for the for the routine that you get, and this will surprise some of you, but for the thoroughness, Dermalogica. Have that. Opinion. <laughs> okay, my, I might end with this one because this is like the best question ever asked to me. Opinions on swearing with children and them swearing. I know you slip out the occasional profanities. Yes, I do. Um, here's what I think. When we had the first child, when we had Ben, son number one, as we call him, I was absolutely adamant. I was about 22. I was 22, not about 22. You were there, you can remember. And I was adamant we wouldn't swear in front of him and, you know, keep don't swear. And, and I came from a family um, up north. My mum and dad never swore in front of me and I never swore in front of them. And I, I remember I once told a, a friend of mine, to Lindsay Adkins, if you're watching this, I told him to piss off in the street because he was being mean to me. And my dad chased me up the stairs and smacked my ass. No joke. So I come from a family where you don't swear. My husband doesn't. And then I didn't. When I became a late teen, I think it had the opposite effect on me and I turned into Sharon Osbourne. So we have always, since, um, well, what happens is you do really well and then you have two kids and then you just start effing and blinding everywhere because you're so stressed. So here's what I think. My kids will swear in front of us, but they never swear at us. Does that make sense? So if they swore at me, I'd slap them across the face. But I've never done that. If they're swearing at each other, that's the hardest part because your children, I don't know if you have young children or if you have young siblings, but as a parent, don't get involved in their fights. They will call each other names that you haven't heard since you were backstage with Led Zepp in the 70s. Don't get involved, leave them to it. Because what happens is if you step in, they both come at you like velociraptors. <laughs> so yes, we swear in front of our kids. We never swear at them. and they never swear at us. Does that make sense? Um, we also mimic a lot of, um, if you heard us in the street, we do a lot of banter in our family. If you heard us in the street, you would think we were having real arguments. We're not. Although that was that one time in Waitrose where someone spotted me and said hello and I was in the middle of a huge row with Jim. I'm really sorry, I still feel bad. I was like, oh hi, nice to meet you. But I was really going, you fucking ridiculous. Like, um, we talk a lot in movies. We're a very media driven family. We talk, all my, my husband and my sons are all musicians. There's guitars everywhere you would have seen in the background in the vlogs. So we talk a lot in movie quotes. Um, our kids have nicknames from movie characters in a, in a really good healthy way, not in a sad way. So we will, and we're obsessed with the Goldbergs at the moment. So we, I frequently call my kids idiot but it's a moron, but that's from the Goldberg, so they know I mean it in that context and I don't actually think they're stupid. So, but in, in answer to your question, yes, we all swear. Um, let's do a couple more, because I don't want it to go on forever and ever and ever. Uh, I'd love to hear more about your time growing up in the South. I grew up in Mississippi from when I was four to 10. We went back in, the, in 1999 to see my grandfather, who wasn't well at the time. Um, I loved it. I had a great childhood. Um, we moved back to the UK when I was 11. My grandmother wasn't well and my mum couldn't bear to be away from her. And we moved back. But I love the South. I love the people. Um, it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, what would you say in response to people who never have enough time for skincare? How do you motivate your clients and set expectations for their at-home care? So this is kind of in between, but what I say is you have as much time as you want to make. So I know if I put time to go to the gym, if I was committed, I would make time. I'm not. It's my own lazy fault, as you can probably tell. I make sure I cleanse my face every evening. That's always going to happen no matter what. So when people say I don't have time, 
I, I do get quite arsy and say, in a nice way, and say, oh really, you don't have time? I worked maybe 70 hours last week and I have four kids. Not interested. I guilt them is probably the answer. I guilt them. Do you still think opening your own spa, nail salon is a lucrative business or do you see those businesses declining? I don't see them declining, but I think you have to be really careful where you open. I think you're gonna make a much better living if you open somewhere locally than on a high street. Because if you open locally, you've got your local traffic, you become the only place to be. If you open on the high street, you have competition from the big department stores and the concessions in those department stores that are probably gonna be cheaper than you because they can afford to be. Um, but no, it's not going anywhere. I mean, beauty is booming. It's just, I think the key is your staff and where you put your business. One more, two more. How are Monty and Penny today? I don't know, I haven't seen them. I'm gonna go home and give them cuddles. Have you got, oh, here's the last one, I have a non-skincare question, got any more concerts lined up? And if so, who are you going to see next? I always have concerts lined up. I am going to see Little Big Town at the Royal Albert Hall in October or November, it's later in the year, I don't know when, too far away, frankly. I am going to, actually, that might be my only next gig that I've got planned. I don't think I've got any gigs planned. I always do the Country Music Festival in March, and then anything that comes along I buy tickets for that I want to go to. So we are big gig goers. I am particularly a big gig goer and I will go and see people repeatedly whereas Mr Hirons tends to um, go and see them once or twice and then he's done. Unless it's like Peter Gabriel or Bruce, then he'd go all the time. Okay, I'm genuinely going to do one more question now, I promise, and then I'm going to leave you alone. And again, this is a nice one. So what suggestion would you give to a 20 something woman who is trying to get out there again after raising a baby, but is feeling a little overwhelmed and self-conscious after not working for a few years? Network, do your, do your research. It didn't matter when I took time off of work and then came back into it, I had always kept my eye on the game and I was always reading up and I always knew what products were new and I always knew what was going on. So keep your eye on the ball, network, keep your relationships. If you don't have any, go and make some. Like I said, visit your local, wherever you want to work, go and visit that place and let them get to know your face. Um, I hired people in Space NK like that. Customers would come in and then, you know, they, we'd see them every week and then they would mention that they were looking for a part-time job and I would be like, oh, perfect. Um, I would say, I wouldn't worry so much about the fact that you've just had a baby and don't offer up that information because we tend to do that as women, especially, we tend to go, oh, I have a baby, he's one you know, I'm just getting back into it, blah, blah, blah. They don't need to know that. They don't need to know that. Also, it's not their problem. And I mean that in the best possible way. So talk about you. Don't talk about your kid. Talk about what you love. Talk about your passions. And also, you know, don't worry about being confident in what you know. I think we're always, as girls, we're always women, women. We, we always find it easy to almost apologise for knowing our shit. Don't do that. Don't do that. When people say, oh, you really know something, I'm like, yes, I do. I spend a lot of time doing research. I use my brain for that reason. So I would say, fake it till you make it. Only in terms of confidence. Don't fake what you don't know. Do loads of research. Read loads of websites. You know, subscribe to Women's Wear Daily. Obviously, it depends on what your, what your funds are and what kind of job you're going for. But absolutely, absolutely don't worry about the whole, I just had a baby. Because a lot of the people you are out there with will have the same thing. Once you've had a kid, it's always here in the back of your head. You know, I've had, I've been on conference calls and I've had kids throwing up and it's just, it's always here. So you have, I'm focusing on my job here and here's kids, kids, kids. So we've all been there. Find someone with a sympathetic ear if you're nervous, but go for it. You can do it. You've given birth for God's sake. How hard could it be? See you soon.